Hi there folks, uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Alex. I've been playing Magic the Gathering for ooh, about four years now. Um, and I'm not a big standard player, but I do also, but I do like to get um, the new sets when they come out. And obviously with all the craziness going on in the world at the moment, uh, the newest set, Ikoria Lower of Behemoths, has been delayed. Um, actually finally came out last Friday. Um, and today I finally got my booster boxes. Um, I ordered my boost boxes this time round uh, from a website called doublesleeved.co.uk. Um, normally I would get them from my local game store, but that's not really been possible this time. Um, now, the reason it's so late is they, they had some stock issues, but in fairness to them, they emailed me to let uh, let me know that that was going to be the case. Uh, they kept me updated and they did uh, speed up the process by sending it out uh, special delivery uh, this week. So I'm quite happy with that. What gets me the most is they actually sent me a lovely handwritten message um, to say thank you for purchasing from them and to apologize for the delay in it. I do understand that obviously with the COVID, uh, mail is moving slower, um, as is stock of a lot of things. So uh, yeah, I finally got them today. Uh, they also popped in a Theros Beyond Death booster, which was nice of them. Um, I assume a little apology. So um, what I'm going to start by doing is actually cracking that and see what I get. Fingers crossed for something good. Um, so yeah, I basically decided to do this video because, well, I'm bored at home with uh, the coronavirus, everything going on with that. So yeah, um, I'm sure some of my friends at the local game store will potentially watch this, especially Jet. He loves a good uh, booster box opener. And a uh, rare, oh, there's only one rare, no foils. And this is the Acron War. So nothing else to mention in that but yeah finally happy I'm really I've been so looking forward to getting my hands on this for, for weeks and weeks I, I really liked spoilers there's a lot of good cards I know a lot of people may disagree but there's a lot of good cards I like in it um, that will go certainly a lot that will go well in commander which is what I primarily play um, I did get my commander decks actually yesterday again from double sleeve and I've sat uh, sleeving those up and me messing with those this morning until I was very pleasantly surprised by uh, the doorbell going and uh, finding my booster boxes here. So let's of course start with the box topper. Uh, I really like what Wizards did with this, uh, crossing over with uh, Godzilla. Uh, not necessarily just making it the mythic rares, but like some of the other cards in it were quite cool. Um, I wasn't that fussed about the buyer box promo. It's an interesting concept um, for this one that where it's giving basically your creatures toughness is equal to their pair instead, which is quite interesting if you play it like playing aggro, but uh, not for me. Ooh, okay. Now that's that's what I like to see. Uh, I got Bio Quartz Space Godzilla. Uh, so this is the Godzilla form of Brokos Apex of Power, uh, which is one of the mythics uh, with Mutate from the set. Um, this is actually the Sultai one, which is good because I have a deck that this is going to go in straight away. And I'm totally going to use the Godzilla box topper one. So very happy with that pull. So let's get cracking. I'm going to start on the top layer and go from left to right and then next layer left to right for those of you that may be trying to map whether or not a courier is mappable like i know some previous sets have been uh, so starting with the top left pack what have we got um, i will try and also sort as i go along because i like to to do that so I'll start off by showing you some of the commons and uncommons, but I'll probably switch to just showing the rares towards the end of Dranith Healer. 
uh, one of the new cycling payoffs. Uh, whenever you cycle another card, you gain a life. It's a two drop, two two for in white. Uh, you can cycle it itself for one. Uh, I do actually have a cycling deck for standard in mind that this is going to go in. It's not great in it. It's it's more it will probably get cycled itself more often. Um, but it's handy against aggro decks to have that bit of life gain. Um, next card, Unexpected Fangs. Now, this is one of my favourite cards um, in the set, even though it's only a common. Uh, instant speed, one and a black. Put a plus one, plus one counter on, and a lifelink counter on target creature. For those of you that do play with me, you know I love playing plus one, plus one counter decks. Um, my favourite tribe is Hydras, which is why I was so happy with the Hydra support that's coming out in the Commander decks. Um, and this actually is the right colour, so it might go in that deck. I'm not convinced it will. Um, but for tabletop fun, two mana, plus one, plus one counter, and lifelink counter, I'm really impressed with that. I'm, I'm looking forward to playing it. Uh, next, Adventurous Impulse. This is a reprint, um, I believe, from Ixalan. Um, I could be wrong on that. Some nice artwork. That was see use in some decks certainly mine I, i'm not as i say super competitive phase dolphin uh, when a phase dolphin attacks another target attacking creature you can't be blocked this turn now that's interesting it actually the artwork's quite interesting as well because it looks very much like umbra armor uh it's three drop for a one four ah then we get on to one of the um storytelling cards from akoria Cathartic Reunion. Now, obviously, uh, this is a reprint, but this goes along with a couple of other cards that tell the story of a bonder and his bonded creature. Um, I said I was going to put these in colour order. <laughs> so, we go white, blue, black, red, green. Can't have enemy colours next to each other. Uh, next, I got a Divine Arrow. This is again a reprint, I believe. Uh, deals 4 damage target, attacking or blocking creature at instant speed. Solid removal, actually. A lot of people underrate this. I find it quite handy for, for two. Four damage will take out a lot of things that are attacking you. It's also handy for saving your own stuff if it gets blocked. Um, you can kill a creature beforehand, or you can kill a bigger creature that they thought, oh, I'll just chump lock your 1-1 one, one with my big... 4-4. Four, uh, four, four. Two mana, dead. Okay, ooh. Now that's nice. So, uh, this is one of the, again, one of the cards that I really liked the look of anyway. Uh, Vulpakeet. But I've got the alternate art for it. That's quite nice. My wife will like that one. She really likes foxes. Um, so, a, a, a flying fox to her is the kind of thing she would play just because it's a fox. Uh, I then got an artifact, Sleeper Dart. Two drop when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Tap, sack it, target creature doesn't untap during its next untap step. That's again one of the ones I, I glossed over and didn't really notice when I was looking through the spoilers. Uh, colorless goes there. Aha, there we go. Uh, Mysterious Egg. Uh, it's one of those commons that if people start playing Mutate, and I'm not convinced they will, because there's not a whole lot of support for it, if they do, that will see a lot of play because it's just good value. Just like, oh, I'll drop this down straight away. It's a one drop, zero, two. Pretty innocuous people are going to ignore it. Uh, I've seen a lovely combo. You can then turn three, mutate the Vulpa Keat onto it. And all of a sudden, oh, because when this creature mutates, it gets a plus one, plus one. When this creature mutates, it gets plus one, plus one. Turn three, all of a sudden, you've got an attacking, flying, four, five. I think Mutate has potential, but whether it's competitive enough to see the pros playing it, we'll see. Ah, Fire Prophecy, red instant removal. This will see a lot of play, I think, especially when uh, other sets cycle out. Parcel Beast. Ah, so this is one of the uncommons that has been uh, incredibly popular uh, when I've been keeping an eye on the prices. Um, it seems to be the one Mutate card that a lot of people are thinking, you know what, this has got to go in the deck. Um, I can see why. 
because as a, on its own it's a four drop two four not great but when you mutate it on something cheap for just simic and then you've got the option to uh one and tap look at the top card of your library if it's land put it onto the battlefield if you don't it goes into your hand it's just great ramp um i, I think again if mutate sees a lot of play this is definitely one to watch as I say, a lot of people seem to be uh, valuing this quite highly still. Call of the Death Dweller. Graveyard Retrieval in black. Uh, uncommon. This is one that uh, I actually have a deck in mind for. I'm planning on building a Rakdos deck uh, that's focusing on the Menace um, abilities that are in this, in this set. Uh, that are pumping up Menace more and more. And a lot of those creatures are CMC 3 or less. So great retrieval there. Aha. Flourishing Fox. So uh, last uncommon here. This this is key to the cycling deck that I'm building. Um, one drop. 1-1. One, one, but whenever you cycle another card, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. I already said I like playing plus 1 plus 1 counters. And the fact that I can drop this on turn 1 and then like just start pumping the hell out of it. Uh, with all the other cards in the deck that have got cycling, it's just going to be great. Um, I love the flavor text on this. Day one, these spot pups have really taken to me. Day four, big, so big, need additional security. Uh, John Lund, Mission and Naturalist, research notes. Gotta love that flavor text. And finally, we get to our rare. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so my rare in this pack is the Zagoth Triome. So that's the Sultai uh, land uh, the, from this set. They're the three color land rares, which I really like the look of. And a lot of people are thinking, oh, this is great, because they actually have the, the basic land types is what's particularly great about these. So you can go and search for them with certain cards. Uh, they also have cycling themselves. So, you know, these, these are absolutely brilliant uh, rares as far as I'm concerned. And I think Wizards know that. And the, the price reflects that. Uh, because this is obviously the first printing of them, these these are not the cheapest rares uh, in the set. I know some of the rares already have dropped to, well, less than uncommons. Uh, and then, rather than a basic land, I got a Swift Water Cliffs. And my token is 3-3 Beast, which is good because I have various decks that I actually need the, these tokens for. Um, Beast Within. The particular card that was printed in Conspiracy and in, oh, what was the, the, the set called? I'm sure somebody will remind me. It's the one that was all about uh, working as a team anyway. Uh, destroy an opponent, creates 3-3. Three, three. So that will be great for that. Pack 2 then. Happy with that that first pack. Is that got to try on particularly? I'm um, good. good. Uh, the flourishing box, which I need, and the altar uh, bulb kit is good. Let's just actually put that bulb kit elsewhere. Okay. Uh, so, first one on this, I have a ferocious tiger gorilla. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it gets your choice of a trample counter or a menace counter. It's a four drop, four three casse. First off, I love the art on this. The the it's. The way it seamlessly transforms from a tiger into an ape, um, but it has the tiger claws, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, interesting. That might see play in my Rakdos deck. Might not. We'll see. I don't know if there's room. It's a bit high on the curve for what I want to do. Next, instant, uh, spontaneous flight. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Put a flying counter on it for three. <laughs> the flavor text, amazing. And I was only trying to teach her to sit again. It's a beautiful, lovely flying box. Uh, corpse churn next, uh, that's a reprint. I hadn't really seen the artwork for that though. That's really cool. Ah, brilliant. So this is again one of the commons uh, I was really excited for. It's called Ram Through. Uh, one in the green, instant. Target creature you control deals damage to, equal to its power to target creature you don't control. So it's a one-sided fight 
for starters, because I hate the fight mechanic. Because, well, yes, it's green and it's removal, which is great, but the fact that you you know your creature itself takes the damage, it's not like black removal where it's just like I'm just gonna kill it, you know. And, and I get that it's got to be different to black removal because well that's what black removal do and green is all about fighting. But I like that the one side fights because it's very much just that I'm a bigger thing, I'm going to eat you. Um, but what I love about this is is the excess damage is dealt to uh, to your opponent. It's basically uh, like it, tra it tramples through. Now uh, we first saw something like this in uh, Unstable and I've noticed a lot of the things in this set are similar to what was in Us Unstable. The mutates mechanic itself is very much uh, like the mechanic in Unstable allows you to just combine two creatures together. Um, I think they very much went, well, you know what, this has been popular and with a little tweaking, it won't be quite so broken. And so they decided, you know, we'll, we'll just change it up this way and we'll put it in a set. Um, remains to be seen. I've seen some interesting thoughts on what things you can mutate with that are quite broken. Um, but whether they see competitive play, we'll see. I know I certainly have some good ideas for Commander. Um, I'm looking forward to playing a tree me, uh, the ever playful, um, and seeing what shenanigans I can get up to with him. Uh, next comment is another reprint. It is Frost Links. Uh, next con. Ah, this one's interesting. Fully grown. Uh, this is another one that kind of tells one of the uh, Ikoria stories in the this combo, this pairs with uh, another card that's, I believe, a creature card, which shows this bonder up here uh, with his creature as actually just a tiny little baby on his shoulder. Uh, I forget what the card's called. Uh, feel free to put it in the comments and correct me, you know. Um, but yeah. Again, great flavor text on this. One day I woke up and knew I had nothing left to teach her. So now I ride on her shoulders and follow where she leads. Beautiful. Uh, target creature gets plus three, plus three until end turn and puts a trample counter on it for three. That's what I love about this set is rather than, oh, everything's just end of turn on instant stuff like plus three, plus three for three and trample, not bad. The trample sticks around, love that mechanic. I love that they've now made keyword counters. Um, Next, I've got another Fire Prophecy. Ooh, okay. Uh, this one's an interesting card. Adaptive Shimmerer. This is one of only a few colourless cards, colourless creatures, that isn't an artefact. Um, the first ones to do that were certain Aldrazi cards. Um, since then, there's, I think this is, might actually be the first set to start doing that again, or... It's only the second set since the Eldrazi ones to, to do that. So it's an interesting creature that. Uh, five for a zero, zero flash enters with three plus one counters. Not great. That's why it's a common. I mean, if you've got something on the battlefield to like Dublin season, Primal Vigor, great. Um, otherwise, eh. Useful in certain situations with the flash, but five cost. Uh, next, Memory Leak Black. I believe this is a reprint too. Uh, On to the uncommons. I have a multicolored card here. Channeled Force. Additional cost to cast it. Discard X cards. Target player draws X. Channel Force deals X damage to up to one target creature or planeswalker. I believe it's Narcissus on the artwork. Quite nice. Um, not really my kind of thing to play. I'm not a spell slinger. I'm very much a, I'm going to cast big creatures. Um, so red, blue don't see a lot of play with me, especially instants. Uh, the next one I have is a keen sight mentor. When it enters the battlefield, put a vigilance counter on target, non-human creature you control. It's a three drop for uh, one four creature. It also has two tap. Uh, put a plus one counter on each creature you control with Vigilance. 
there. Oh, excuse me, I've got itchy nose. Uh, next, oh, okay, so I have the artifact version of the Triomes, this time for Indatha, which is, I can't remember what the name is. It's the white, black, green one anyway, uh, which is great. It has cycling for two, it's a three drop. Good in, in uh, Commander, I think they'll, they'll work well. I know a lot of people like, oh, I'll drop this thing that produces any color mana. It's like, great, this is an alternative, it's cheap, and it'll give you just specifically the colors you want if you're only playing three colors. Okay, so on to the rare. So I have Mythos of Snapdax. Uh, this is the Mardu removal spell. Each player chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from among non land permanents they control, then sacrifices the rest. If black and red was spent to cast the spell, you choose the permanent each player play uh, instead. It's two and a white, but as I say, it's Mardu because you've got the option to play, uh, pay the red and the black, and you get to pick what they keep, which I think is actually really great. Now, this I've watched decline quite significantly on the price, um, considering it's standard legal board wipe. Um, and if you pay those extra colours, it really is a proper board wipe because you just choose the crappiest things that your opponents have to, for them to keep. Uh, so Mythos of Snapdax, the rare in this pack. Uh, I then got an island. Oh, and this is a special pack. Okay. So, behind the hidden behind the island, I have a full alternative art foil Narset winning is what I would say to that foil version full art alternative art mythic rare I am very happy with that I mean as I said already I'm not big uh, spell slinger player and obviously she is very much Jessi spell slinger support but I'm happy with that. That that that's going in the trade folder straight away. Uh, and the token is the companion zone marker. Um, companions, yeah, they're they're something interesting to talk about. They seem to be breaking every format right now. Um, now obviously they 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 did make some updates to the uh, banned and restricted list yesterday. Um, whether that helps balance it out, we'll see. Standard itself, though, is still being very much dominated by Companion, from what I've seen. I refuse to play um, on Arena or online, because I very much like to have the cards, which, you know, fluctuate in value and are much more valuable than the digital format. And when, and I do say when, not if, when they eventually retire MTGO, and or um, arena all the money people have spent on that is going to go disappear i will still physically have the cards and when i'm deck building i like to just have the things in front of me and go oh actually that's a that's a good idea i'll stick that in there um but companion uh sorry arena uh is a good way for people to look at what is winning what is competitive, what the pros are playing and testing, and then go and copy it and be unimaginative. Um, I'm sorry if that offends you, but that's my opinion on the matter. Um, so for those people that do want to just be competitive, but you know, not think for themselves, Arena is great for that. And you can go and look and it's, it gives people an idea of what will be expensive in paper because they built it cheaper or in some cases free online and got a chance to play it and know oh, well the, the pros are going to play this so i need to get these cards in paper for you know my actual tournament um i might come back to companions later anyway but anyway next set uh one of my favorite common enchantments it is a reprint deadweight uh massively underrated i find this is a one drop minus two minus two this can be we early on removal uh, or just depower something big later on. I find it really quite handy in draft or in um, sealed event pre-releases. Absolutely brilliant. 
Uh, I have another ram through. Uh, next common is blue. It's a one-two creature for one and a blue called Facet Reader with one tap, draw a card, discard a card. Fair enough. The next one is red. Uh, Lava Serpent, five and a red for a five-five haste with cycling. Okay, not great. Fair if you if you want to build a deck with cycling, just stick it in there for the sake of that. Again, would be great in sealed um, as a game ender. Otherwise, probably won't see a whole lot of play. Uh, next comment: Survive Sabertooth. It is a three-one vanilla cat with beautiful artwork. Look at that orange and green tiger. Uh, next, Blitz Leech. I don't recall seeing this one. Five and a black for a 5-2 with flash. And when it enters the battlefield target, creature and opponent controls get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Remove all counters from that creature. Okay, that could be interesting. That's handy if somebody, say, playing the Ozolith and they've just gone to... Uh, combat and shifted a whole bunch of counters onto something. Take them away. At six drop though, all it's going to do is maybe delay towards the end of the game. Um, I can't see it too much play, but interesting. If I come up against somebody who's playing a you know a very uh, token, not token, counter heavy deck, stick that in maybe. There are other creatures out there though that do that. So in Commander. I certainly probably wouldn't play that. Uh, another mysterious egg. A day squad marshal. Uh, four drop three three. When it enters, create a one one. There. Okay. Uh, blazing volley. A one drop sorcery, uh, but deals one damage to each creature your opponents control. Okay. Can't see that seen a lot of. Uh, play. I do believe that's also a reprint. I will be using that though uh, in my Rakdos Menace deck because um, well it goes brilliantly with a particular rare that I'll be sticking in that deck which gives your instance and sorceries death touch. Uh, I forget the name of it it's from the um, Ravnica return block. Uh, it has Menace itself and combined with that that's a board wipe. Oh. Okay, ooh, so I've got another alternative art card. Uh, it's a Cavern Whisperer. It's a 5 drop 4 4 uh, menace with mutate for 4. Uh, whenever it mutates, each opponent discards a card. I do love the alternate art on this one. Uh, the original art, okay. This I find much more menacing, which is great because obviously the keyword on it is menace. up there aha right uh uncommons sonora's hellbonder this bad boy is going in the, the aforementioned menace deck that i'll be building because rather than your creatures uh, only being able to block by two or more creatures this ups it to three or more it has menace itself it's a two two it's three mana uh but it's hybrid mana This is going to be interesting. Uh, that would go there. The next uncommon I have is the Momentum Rumbler. Uh, it's a four drop three three whenever it attacks. If it doesn't have first strike, put a first strike counter on it. Then whenever it attacks, if it has first strike, it gains double strike. So it gets more and more powerful the longer it's left on the battlefield. And if you find another way of giving it first strike once it's come in, there are, there are plenty of cards in, in the set that do that. When it's actually able to attack next turn, assuming you haven't given it haste, double strike. Solid card, I think. Uh, next uncommon, Bastion of Remembrance. Uh, this is an enchantment for three. When it enters, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier token. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So, anyone playing Aristocrats? That's going in your deck straight away, I'm guessing, because it's another drain, uh, it's another leech, and obviously it creates you as a human as well to sack off. 
to three drop and it'll sit there nicely yeah good solid card okay rare i love this card uh as i said i love playing really big creatures and when mark rosewater said oh we've we've given an and put an enchantment in that is the biggest pump we've ever done i was very excited for this now obviously the one downside is when it enters it taps the the creature you enchant but seven mana enchanted creature gets plus 20 plus 20 colossification love this um i've already got some ideas for this i have a couple of commander decks uh, that i'm building that also make use of an enchantment called free from the real uh, which allows you to tap or untap the enchanted creature for a blue now whilst the primary idea of those is to create a lot of mana because you stick it on a mana dot that creates more than one mana if you can also then stick this on it and then untap it and then attack nice bit of damage it's a shame it doesn't give it trample as well but i mean plus 20 plus 20 stick this on your commander untap it swing yeah uh also goes well with things like fling uh i've noticed in standard there is a combo with this uh people are playing that's uh gruel um you basically stick this in the graveyard along with uh something that gives trample and you play a particular card it's a creature that brings back all the enchantments from the graveyard to the battlefield oh suddenly you've got this out for practically nothing there's then use something like cure to untap and swing and if it doesn't get through fling uh you can combine it with ram through is it ram through you combine it with yeah which obviously as i already said deals damage equal to your, power, your creature's uh power and excess damage trampled through massively underrated card i think i get it to seven drop top of the curve a lot of people won't bother but in certainly in other formats like commander this is going to be great but i mean if people don't want to value it and it drops in price that's fine i'll, I'll quite happily buy a few of these stick them in various decks uh, my land is again not a basic land i got a wins card crag uh, which is the boros taps gain of life and my token oh i've not seen the artwork for this that's that's really nice it's a one one human soldier with a ridiculously large sword which is something that you know the they they went with for the artwork for Ikoria is they th thought oh well we're gonna have people trying to kill massive beasts and creatures so we'll give them stupidly big uh swords that they could never possibly swing uh, but i do also like the the law that the crystals uh show when creatures are, are nearby especially the big creatures that are gonna come and attack the city so people wear crystals all over their body which i think is really cool uh that's that third pack is that the third pack yeah that's the third pack uh so on to the next one so again starting from the left wow i'm already up to 33 minutes place. if you're still watching this i mean kudos to you i'm doing it just for a bit of fun uh so first first uh lurking dead eye when it enters the battlefield destroy target creature that was dealt this turn it flashes in for four it's a four two great removal in sealed not going to see that much playing standard i don't think humble naturalist a two drop one three mana dork any color so long as it's for a creature spell in a creature heavy uh set pretty good um especially if you're building around again coming back to companion uh there's one of the companions where it can only be a companion if all of your non-land opponents share a creature share a type and most people are going well i kind of need to go creature with that then it's like yeah there that's handy in that <laughs> uh startling development uh it's an instant common for two until end of turn target creature becomes a blue serpent with base power and toughness 4 4 it also has cycling flavor text remarkably dinner continued with no further interruptions and it's showing an eagle's nest with a random big serpent baby that's clearly been stuck into the nest and hatched great just a little bit of flavor on that 
Um, it could see play. I mean, turn two, you drop something on turn one, turn it into a 4 4, that's a nice threat to start hitting with. Otherwise, it's good in there for cycling. Uh, next common, Frenzied Raptor. It's a vanilla 4 2 dinosaur for three. I like dinosaurs, but I like them to have abilities. Uh, next, Solid Footing. One white. Flash, enchanted creature, it gets plus one, plus one. As long as the creature has vigilance, it assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. That's a lot for a common. I can see that being particularly useful in certain decks, um, especially White Weenie or Defender. Um, I have a friend who has a Defender deck built around Arcades. That's a solid choice to go in that. Uh, next, one black, one two, Serrated Scorpion. When it dies, each opponent takes two damage and you gain two life. Solid little chump blocker for black. I'm surprised it doesn't have death touch, but instead they decide to go with the drain effect. Uh, Gloom Pangolin. Three drop, one five, Vanilla card in black. It's one I skipped over in the, in the uh, reveals. Interesting. Probably won't see any play. Again, maybe in sealed as a, a cheap-ish blocker. And I suppose with the, the option to put counters on things with this set, it could work. You know, stick death touch on it. It's a great chunk blocker. Uh, next, a reprint. Uh, Fertilid. Can see play in certain formats like Commander. In Standard, we'll see. I mean, it's a bit of ramp. Ramp is really super hot in Standard right now. It's, I think that's what's the biggest problem with Standard right now. But who am I to talk about that? I'm not a competitive player. Um, next uncommon. Patega Tiger. Four and a white for a 3-4 flying. When it enters the battlefield, target human you control gets plus two, plus two. For those that are doing something, maybe white weenie flyers or white blue flyers that want to mix up their humans and creatures, maybe you're playing a Winota Boros deck. Uh, Patega Tiger. Solid common choice if you're on a budget. Ah, uh, yes. The blue high toughness blocker for drop. 1 6 flash crab crustacean. Lovely pun there. We're well, moving on. On to the uncommons. Sanctuary Smasher. 4 and uh, 2 red for a 6 4 first strike with cycling. And when you cycle it, put a first strike counter on target creature you control. Fair enough. Oh, okay, so now I found it. The card that paired with Fully Grown. Talked about it earlier, this one. It is Proud Wild Bonder. There you go. There's the Bonder with the baby version on his shoulder and then in Fully Grown, riding on the Fully Grown one. Lovely little bit of flavour there from Wizards. Uh, four, two hybrid cruel mana uh, is that. Four, three, trample. Creatures you control with trample have, you may have this creature assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. I like that. I'm a fan of that. And I think in gruel, that'll be good. I've seen online there are some trample tribal decks out there in standard. That goes in that well. Uh, next uncommon, I have the Savai Crystal. This is the Mardu artifact. And now our rare for the pack is Shark Typhoon. Five and blue, enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. 
it also has cycling x1 and a blue and when you cycle it you just create a single xx blue shark to token with thion this um i've seen has not uh, dropped too much in price it's actually been quite popular there's a lot of spell slinger decks out there in standard um fires of invention of course is dominating and that fits right into it so yeah interesting rare might go in my hydra x tribal commander deck that i've built using zaxara from the mutate deck we'll see uh my land mountain and the token is the punch out counters um i love that wizards have done this it's really cool uh it's like the tokens for Ammon kept block um obviously the eternal eyes and the whatever the one that was just like that um i however though have gone a step further and rather than using these and them getting bent and ragged edges and all out of shape i have made my own dice with these on them to stick on top of creatures um i'm not going to show them on the video I am quite proud of them though. Uh, those of you that play with me at the local game store will get to see them. Uh, when the quarantine finally lifts and we can get together and play. Um, I did put them on the Facebook group for those of you that do know me and know where that is um, and want to go and take a look. Next pack uh, Spell Eater Wolverine. Two and a red for a 3 2. Uh, has double strike as long as there are three or more instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard. Again, that's one of those that I glossed over in the spoilers. I like the artwork on it. Uh, stick that in a spell slinger deck. Yeah. Uh, next, Helica Glider. I love this. It's a nightmare squirrel. I just love that it's a nightmare squirrel because squirrels are awesome. <laughs> Uh, there's not enough support for them in in magic, uh, especially outside of the silver bordered unsets. Um, but still, yeah, two two enters with either flying or first strike counter on it for three. <laughs> the flavor on it it could subsist uh, on seeds, but its preferred fare is your face. And I mean, just again, look at look at the artwork on that. How menacing that is. Nightmare Squirrel. Love it. I, I do genuinely love this set. I, I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's not actually that great. It's not going to change standard that much. Oh, mutate. Oh, if there's not more support printed for it, it's not going to live. It's like, well, I mean, you can still make some really cool commander decks with some of this stuff. Um, I, I like it. I like creatures and I like creatures that do things. So I, I'm really enjoying it. That's why I bought two booster boxes. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Serrated Scorpion again. A Greater Sandworm. Uh, it's a 7 drop 7 7. Can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less and has cycling. Importance there on the cycling, which I think is great. Um, I'm, I normally don't like discarding cards at all, uh, even if it allows me to draw something and I could get something that I need. But I'm going to give it a go this time, as I say, I'm building a cycling deck. I love that it they printed it on the higher end curve stuff because that actually really makes sense. Because uh, a lot of time you, you may have it in your open hand and go, oh, but I'm not going to drop that. Do I need to mulligan? No, because you can just cycle it away and hopefully you'll get what you need instead. Uh, next comment. Glimmer Bell is an elemental jellyfish for one and blue. It's a one three with flying with one and blue to untap it. That's a lovely target for colossification. Built in untap. All of a sudden you've got a 2123 elemental flying jellyfish. Uh, next one, another lava serpent. Next is a reprint. But I love the artwork on this because it's using that cave uh, paintwork 
style that they've put on the Mythos cards. It's just an essence scatter, but again, like I said, I love the artwork. Uh, another Blazing Volley. Evolving Wilds. Can never get too many of these. I have so many Commander decks. They all need Evolving Wilds. Okay. Uh, another one for those of you out there that are building Mutate decks. I must have in the deck. Essence Symbiote. Whenever a creature you control mutates, put a plus one plus one counter it and gain two life. Remember what we were saying earlier about having the mysterious egg on the battlefield? That's your turn one. Turn two, drop an essence symbiote. Turn three, mutate that Vulp Keat onto it. Oh, turn three, you've got an attacking what is now a five six flyer. Did I say it was 5-6? Because it's going to get a plus one counter from the egg, plus one counter itself, and a plus one counter on the essence of it. Yeah, 5-6 flying attacker on turn three. I think I might be building that deck myself. Uh, next, on to our uncommons. Okay, uh, this is one that is going in my Rakdos Menace deck. It is Grim Dancer. One or two black for a 3-3. Three, three. But it enters with your choice of two different counters on it. From Menace, Death Touch and Lifelink. Straight away I'm going to give it Menace. Then I'm going to have the option. Do I want to give it Lifelink? Do I want to give it Death Touch? Do I need a block out? I don't want to gain some life. Really solid. Solid, solid uncommon card. Play set of these going in the Menace deck. Uh, next uncommon. The General's Enforcer. Uh, Ors of 2 3. Legendary humans you control have indestructible. I do have a legendary deck. I'm not sure how many of them are humans, but that could be interesting to put in there. Also has two and Ors of exile target card from a graveyard, not just yours. If it was a creature card, put a 1 1 white human soldier onto uh, the battlefield. Well, create a 1 1 human, but it's the same thing. Uh, final uncommon, Clash of the Titans. Three and two red, target creature fights another target creature. Instant speed. Even still, that seems overpriced for me for a fight. I mean, you've got double red for starters, and then three. I get that it's instant rather than sorcery. But again, it's not a one-sided fight, it's a fight. So each creature deals damage. Not my favourite card in this set by any means. Ooh, and now our rare for the pack. Interesting one. It's Timur, plus one. It is Song of Creation. It's an enchantment. When, uh, you may play an additional land on each of your turns. Again, getting that ramp in there. Whenever you cast a spell, draw two cards. But at the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. This, this is an interesting one. Um, I know a lot of people online want to build around this i'm curious to what their ideas are going to be it's great that you're getting good card draw off of that if you can then pull the stuff from your grave that you discard that you didn't necessarily use cool and the ramp on it it's an interesting card It'd be, i'm curious to see how it's going to be used uh my land slot in here is jungle hollow Again, not a co not uh, just a basic land. A jewel comes in tapped to gain a life. And I got some more of the counters on the token. Um, two, three, four. Yeah, so uh, again, from the far right now, pack number six. I'm going to stop waffling probably so much of it now and just kind of go through a bit more. Uh, uncommon is thwart the enemy two and a green prevent all damage that will be dealt this turn by creatures your opponents control it's a fog effect um what's interesting about this is it's not combat damage it is by creatures your opponents control but it's not combat damage so anything that say is oh whenever you cast a spell ping for one or tap ping for one untap when you cast a spell it prevents that too uh, what I do like about this is the artwork is my 
favourite Planeswalker, Vivian Reed. I'm just absolutely in love with Vivian. I mean, she's an archer. She's in green and she does all the things that I like doing. Uh, so just putting plus one counters on things and just playing big creatures. And the arc bow is just a fantastic concept. I mean, it didn't. The, the one they actually printed is not great. Um, but the concept of it, the idea that it, it insoles or it has insoled within it all, all the creatures that it's killed. That was, I believe, the original law for it, whether they changed that to just, you know, creatures it's encountered. I don't know. Um, and she can just shoot and create these phantasm copies of those creatures. It's just brilliant. I loved the trailer for Ikoria, uh, where her dragon cat scorpion thing is attacking the giant worm. And when it gets knocked aside, she just goes, ping, here, have another one. And they team up. And that's just brilliant. Um, I really, really love Vivian. Uh, so, yeah. Thwart the enemy with Vivian on, on it. Uh, another Glimmer Bell. Another Frenzied Raptor. Another Dinosaur. Uh, five and one white for a 3-6. Vigilance. Uh, with Cycling 1. Imposing Mantisaur. Uh, next, some Black Removal. Mutual Destruction for one black. Has Flash as long as a opponent you control. Has flash. There's an additional co cost uh, to cast it. Sack creature, destroy target creature. In certain decks, solid, solid removal. Especially if you, you're happy to sack your own creatures. Um, I'm planning on building a Demir flash deck. Rather than Simic flash going Demir. That might go in it. Might go in the sideboard. We'll see. Oh, yes. Okay, uh, one of my favourite comments. Um, I didn't check to see, but it was a solid lead. Uh, Wizards did a poll on their Facebook for to find what's the ultimate creature in Ikoria. And it had the five uh, three-colour mythics. I believe it had the red uh, rare that uh, allowed you to uh, cycle it and then bury it and cycle it and bury it. And if you've cycled so many of it, you get to cast it. Um, and then, of course, there was this little dude for one green. It's a 1-1 one, one with trample. Watch out uh, those badgers. But you can pump it. It is the almighty brushwag. And I believe this won that poll because, you know, people like to troll. Uh, I did vote for it myself. I thought it was hilarious. And actually, I have a couple of um, badger decks that are all about dropping a 1-1 one, one with trample pumping the crap out of it and just smashing face um i love this card it's a, it's a common as well i hope i get a play set out of it and i'm just gonna build a silly deck around it um the flavor text as well laughed at the brushwag hunter's expression meaning died unexpectedly the artwork as well just shows all the all the beasts around it being scared and being like, oh my god, I gotta get away from this thing. It's great. Um, I look forward to just playing with that for fun. Uh, another essence scatter. Another first lid. Another crustacean. And then another interesting little common. Boot nipper, one on the back for a two one. Enters with your choice of death touch or life encounter on it. I mean, I think every time it's going to be a choice of death touch and you're just going to use it as a little blocker. But even still, um, what I like is the artwork that it's got this giant mouth, but out of it comes a little mouth like uh, the Xenomorphs from Alien. And then there's some little dragonflies around it. I think it's a cool little card, but it's ne you're never going to choose a life link with it. Uh, uncommons. Mutating Spider, Glowstone Recluse, 2 and green for 2, 3, or 3 and green to mutate it. Reach, when it mutates, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. My kind of thing, that might see, if I decide to build a mutate deck, I haven't yet. That might go in it. Uh, dire Tactics, Orzov, Instant, Exile Target Creature. If you don't control a human, you lose life equal to its toughness. 
easy enough to stick a little one one human out there or you know you're playing all of you've probably got them anyway two drop exile instant solid card great removal and it's permanent removal i mean i'd even be potentially play it with losing the life as well i have an all of standard deck that's obviously as some of the cards are going to cycle out when the cycle happens later this year assuming it does i think i mean i wouldn't be surprised if if wizards turn around and say oh you've missed out on a whole bunch of playtime. we might just leave stuff in standard a bit longer whether they do or not i don't know we'll see but they like to mess around with the cycle i mean it was only a couple of years ago they, they changed it from blocks to what it is now um we'll see solid card uh another survey triome that's the artifacts the mardu artifact and the smile on my face is not because i pulled this but because obviously behind this was the rare that i've just seen and i've got another mythic full alternative art planeswalker this time luke of the copper coat i'm not super excited for that about this planeswalker but to pull that i'm happy um that'll go in the trade folder hopefully won't drop too much in price i mean it, i might just hold on to it a bit longer and in future somebody might come up with a broken combo with it and uh, want this lovely art i mean the artwork on that is beautiful i mean i, I absolutely love lucas tiger creature in that I love that he's carrying a hooked sword. Um, yeah. Looks really cool. I haven't yet read Sundred Bond, which I know is all about Luca. Um, and I believe Vivian's in it too. Um, I must get around to reading that. It'd be interesting. But yeah, really happy with that poll. Uh, land, I've just got a basic forest. And again, counters happy with those first six six rares six packs alternate art mythic additional alternate art foil mythic on top of the rare that was in the pack so far i'm getting good value from this pack i'm i'm i'm, I'm from this box i'm happy um next pack i know i've gone been going on nearly an hour and i've only opened six packs that's um yeah pack of 10 minutes i'll try and speed up a bit for those of you that have bothered to watch this uh next pack we have a sudden spinneret one target creature gets plus one plus three time turn and uh, put a reach counter on it and untap it great value for one who says green doesn't have combat tricks and well nobody really because it does have lots of combat tricks but that's great value for a common uh another frost links Ooh, okay so i said i wasn't going to keep waffling on but you know i've just come across another card that's going to go in my cycling deck uh another one of the payoffs for cycling for one and a red a two two dranis singer whenever you cycle another card it deals one damage to each opponent and it has cycling itself great way to just sit and chip away at your opponent uh next checkpoint officer one on a white for a one two with pay one on a white tap to tap target creature great bit of control another dead weight another one of the mutate creatures four on a red for a five four with reach whenever it mutates draw uh discard a card if you do draw a card mutates for three in uh, red cloud piercer Uh, another essence symbiote reprint here anticipate okay black and three for an instant dark bargain look at the top three cards of your library put two of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard dark bargain deals two damage to you interesting choice especially for those of you that are playing uh graveyard tricks and shenanigans um more so outside of standard i know some people with some particularly horrible graveyard themed uh commander decks jet i'm looking at you 
Um, interesting card for that. Yeah, Muldrotha players. Ooh, okay, so Uncommons. Uh, one of the expensive Uncommons because it is just actually great removal. Uh, Heartless Act, one on a black, instant. Choose one. Either destroy target creature with no counters on it or remove up to three counters from target creature. Great, great choice in this set. Um, from what I've seen, a lot of people aren't necessarily building around the, 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 the idea of putting counters on creatures. Certainly not for standard. So that's just great removal. Uh, two drop instant, destroy target creature. Otherwise, you can remove counters. Oh, I'm blocking you with this little thing with a death touch counter on it. Loses its death touch counter. It's just good choice with that. Uh, I need a playset for various decks. Certainly, the uh, Rakdos Menace deck will have a set of those in it. Uh, next uncommon one black for a 1 1. When it mutates, target creature an opponent controls gets minus two, minus two until it doesn't have mutate itself. It's the Zagoth Mamba. But again, great. Drop that up down. Leave it there. Mutate onto it. Bit of removal. Uh, next uncommon is the Rootin' Moloch. Four and a red for a 4 4 when it enters the battlefield. Exile target card with cycling ability from your graveyard. Until the end of uh, your next turn, you may play that card. Now, this isn't currently planned to put into my cycling deck. But it might see go into it. We'll see once I've play tested it a bit. It might go in the sideboard. It's top end of the curve, but it does have cycling itself. Being able to then replay the cards that I've cycled away might be useful. Okay, um, let's see what the rare is behind that. another mythic i'm very happy this is also one of those that has retained a fair bit of value because it's for the spell slingers out there it is riel the everwise uh she is a zero three four one blue and red that's one generic uh, blue and red uh, but she gets plus one plus oh for each instance and sorcery in your graveyard whenever you discard one or more cards for the first time each turn draw that many cards so she's supporting cycling. She's supporting just spell slingers in general. She's a legendary, so she can be your commander if you, if that's what you want. And she can potentially be very, very powerful if you've got a lot of instant sorcery in, in your grave. I'm thinking I will probably stick her in the Jeskai cycling deck, uh, Commander Precon. Really, otherwise. Uh, in my land slots, no basic again. I've got a Rugged Highlands. Gruel Tap, Gain Life. Oh, and then behind that we have a foil. It's only a common, but it is Shredded Sails. One and a red. Instant. Uh, choose Destroy Target Artifact or deal four damage to target creature with Flying. And it also has Cycling. Choices, choices, choices. On a common. Happy with that. And in our token slot, Human Soldier. Pack number eight. Main Serval, one and a white for a 1 4 Vigilant Cat. Whisper Squad, one black for a 1 1 Human Soldier. With pay one and black, search a library for a card named Whisper Squad, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Oh, I, I glossed over this one. Now that's interesting. Um, pay one extra, go find it from your library, stick it onto the battlefield, tapped. Even still, early game, get that down, nothing else play. That's a solid little common. Uh, some more, more sudden spinnerets. Oh, this one I liked. Uh, Thieving Otter. Two and a blue for a 2 2. But when it deals combat damage, uh, sorry. No, deals damage to an opponent. I thought it was combat damage. It's actually just damage. So equipment out there that, or enchantments that allow it to tap to deal damage. Draw a card off it. Uh, another Dranid Stingo. That's good. Need that for my deck. Another Crustacean. Snare Tactician. Two and a white for a 2-3. Whenever you cycle a card, 
tap target creature and opponent controls. Now again, this is not planned to go in my cycling deck, um, but it might go in the sideboard, might not, we'll see. Depends if I get the cards on I need or not. Um, and can be bothered to go buy the extras in singles, or I might just fill the spaces with these again. I'm not super competitive, it's all for a bit of fun. So I'll use what I've got. Uh, Blood Curdle, three and a black, instant, destroy type creature, put a menace counter on a creature you control. Solid removal, not the cheapest, but again, you would use this in any sealed event. And it gives you some, your creature menace as well. I'd happily play that. Uh, Blister Spit Gremlin, one red for a 1-1. One, one. It's a Gremlin, not a Goblin. Uh, gremlins were introduced, I believe, in Kaladesh, and I don't think we've seen them since. Uh, it has one tap, deals one damage to each opponent. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, untap it. Great if you're doing Spellslinger. Shame you've got to pay to tap it to deal the damage, but solid. But again, that green fog we talked about earlier will work against that. Okay, uncommons. Uh, Footfall Crater. Enchantment Aura. Enchant your land. And it then has tap to give target creature trample and haste to end turn with cycling one. I do plan to put at least one of these in my cycling deck. That's all I've got to say about that. Uh, next, Unbreakable Bond, four and a black, sorcery, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a lifelink counter on it. That, I can think of at least one of my commander decks that can go in. Solid little card, graveyard retrieval, because you've got the additional lifelink. I like that. Uh, last and common, Sanctuary Lockdown, two and a white enchantment. Oh, it's uh, it's a human lord, basically. Uh, you, you humans get plus one, plus one. You can pay two and tap two, untapped humans you control, tap target creature and opponent controls. I mean, not great for a lot of things for the cost and, and the tap down is quite costly, but if you're playing human tribal, solid choice. Okay, and then what is our rare? Unpredictable Cyclone, 3 and 2 red, enchantment. If a cycling ability or another non-land card would cause you to draw a card, instead exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a card that shares a card type with the cycled card. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Then put the exiled cards that weren't cast in this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. That is going straight in the cycling precon as a as a swap out uh because that's just brilliant because that can allow you to pay play some really really high cost uh cards i know five itself is fairly high cost but um there's some cool high cost cycling cards in that deck or that i'm going to put in that deck that being able to cast them instead for free might be pretty cool It is a you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. You don't have to. And then if you don't, it just goes on the bottom of your library with the rest of the cards. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, the land slot, we have a basic planes. Oh, behind that, we have another foil. Uh, it's just bashing a remembrance, but still pretty cool. And then in the token slot, another human soldier, but with different artwork this time. Okay, next pack. Uh, Ram through. Facet Reader. Lava Serpent. Survive Sabretooth. Blitz Leech. Thwart the Enemy. Uh, reprint. I like the artwork on this one though. <laughs> Pacifism. I love that there's a little butterfly. There's just confounded and knocked out this huge beast creature and it's just lying there eyes glazed over with its tongue out love it and i do like a good pacifism not used on my creatures but you know to use against others 
Uh, another Blissvic Gremlin. The regular art of the Cavern Whisperer. Uh, I do much prefer the alternate art one that I got. That's really cool. But still, another one that's helpful. Ooh, okay. Once again, a colourless, non-artifact creature. Farfinder. It's a little fox with antlers. 1-1 uh, one, one Vigilance. When it enters, search for a basic land, reveal it, put it into your hand. It's a 3-drop. If you want to ramp, get it early enough. Solid little card with them you can chump block with. Really cool. Uh, uncommons. Primal Empathy. 1 and Simic. Enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Draw a card you control. If you control a creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield. Otherwise, put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature you control. I have so many decks that that could just go in. Um, unusually have the biggest creature. May not be the biggest threat, because it doesn't necessarily have the ability to be the biggest threat. Um, but I normally have the biggest creature when I'm playing Commander, so that's great card draw for that. And if not, stick in a plus one counter on it. I may well try and squeeze that into my Atraxa deck uh, just for that bit of extra card draw. And if I don't have the biggest creature, stick a plus one counter on Atraxa because I love doing that and then just makes her a bigger threat. Uh, next one. Ooh, yes, I, I like this one. Uh, Polywog Symbiote, one on blue for a 1-3. Each creature spell you cast costs one less if it has Mutate. Now, a lot of the mutate creatures themselves, the mutate cost itself is generally cheaper than hard casting them. That affects that too. Or in the case of the big mythics, their mutate is more, I believe. Um, or in the case of Dirge Bat, which is one of the rares, it's an all black that mutates. Its mutate is more, co is more costly. With that on the field, it's gonna reduce it. That's quite handy. And whenever you cast a creature spell, whether you're mutating or not, if it has mutate, draw a card, discard a card. Great little creature, Polywogs in this. Uh, last uncommon, Escape Protocol. One on the blue, enchantment. Whenever you cycle a card, you can pay one. If you do, exile target artifact or creature you control, return to the battlefield under its own control. Blink your own stuff whenever you cycle. I watched a deck tech uh, on MTG Goldfish uh, yesterday, built around this card. Um, it basically, it's not, not something I would play, uh, but it's basically all about blinking your own creatures that do counter spells and things like Frilled Mystic and locking your opponent out of the game just by cycling stuff, uh, which is not that expensive in the first place to cycle and you pay the extra one to blink your stuff. Horrible, horrible card. Um, be interesting to see if people do play it or not. And, oh, okay, so our rare is our first companion. Karuga the Macrosage. Three and two Simic. Hybrid, though, your choice. For a 5-4 Dinosaur Hippo. It's a hippo crossed with a Stegosaurus. Yeah. Um... This is the one where your starting deck contains only cards with CMC 3 or more and lands. I think I'm probably going to use this in Commander. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card for each permanent you control with CMC 3 or greater. I think I can probably forego playing 1 and 2 drops in a Commander deck, even though that limits certain spells and removal. For the option of getting that and the card draw it will give i think it's a really cool card really cool companion i don't think it's going to see much standard play not of the companions that people are choosing but still really cool and would be great in sealed uh, my land is blossoming suns and another token uh counter token okay next one Speed up. It's the uncommon, see, I haven't really covered those much. So we have another checkpoint officer. Let's leech. 
And that's my my opinion. So this will get edited. Ah, there we go. And back. Uh, so um, Blitz Leech, Adventurous Impulse, uh, Gust of Wind, which I believe is a reprint. Uh, cost two less to cast if you control a creature flying. Return target non opponent you don't control to its owner's hand and draw a card. Solid blue <laughs> removal. Um, you're also likely to be playing something with flying if you're playing blue, assuming that you've not gone pure spell singer. Great if you want to play blue in sealed. Uh, great removal there. Uh, another shredded sails. And uh, Garrison Cat. One white for a 1 1. When it dies, make a 1 1 human. Yeah, kitty. Uh, another fully grown. Oh, okay. We have another alternate art. Uh, and it's not one I've covered either. Four and blue for a three four. Elemental bird it with mutate for three and blue. Flying when it mutates, draw a card. It is a dream tail heron. Uh boot nipper. A reprint here, if you like your counter spells. Convolute. And then on to the uncommons. Okay, a uh, 2 plus Golgari for a 4-4 four, four with Mutate that is also 2 plus Golgari but it's hybrid Golgari. Whenever it mutates, return target permanent card from Graveyard to hand. Boneyard Lurker. I can't remember if this is already in the pre-con Mutate deck. If it's not, then it's definitely going in. I think it's already in there. Um, just great Graveyard Retrieval. Especially if you're filling your grave from your library and go, ah, oh, crap, I wanted that. Mutate. Boneyard Lurker. Uh, another Mutate creature for our uncommon. Um, Archipelago. 5 and 2 blue for a 7-7. Seven, seven. Mutate is only 5 and a single blue. Whenever it mutates, tap up to X target creatures, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's end, next end step. If you're doing a lot of mutating on a single creature and somebody hasn't removed it, drop that and you're probably going to win. Assuming they don't remove it. But again, if they haven't already removed the creature, you mutate it quite a bit. What are they doing? That's a solid choice. Uh, and the next final uncommon, three and a green for a 4-4 four, four, wolf bear. Because, you know, who doesn't want to combine a wolf and a bear together? Uh, it actually looks very much like a Wolverine, I find, but it's obviously a lot bigger because there's something riding on the back of it. It is Exuberant Wolf Bear. When it attacks, you may change the base power and toughness of target human you control to Exuberant Wolf Bear's power and toughness until end turn. That's cool. You can make your little 1-1s one into a 4-4. Four four. Or if you've mutated onto the Exuberant Wolf Bear, make it even bigger and then make your humans even bigger. Some interesting combos out there with Mutate. Uh, so the rare for this pack let's see what we've got we have Ruinous Ultimatum the Mardu board wipe sorcery 2 red, 3 white, 2 black destroy all non-land permanents your opponent's control if you're playing Mardu and you're playing it in standard it's a high cost but it's a game ender more of a uh, commander card I think but a solid commander wipe. I've got a couple of decks that I can go in. Uh, land, Blossoming Sands again. And Counters again. Next pack. Okay. Frostvale Ambush. 3 and 2 blue. Instant. Tap up to 2 target creatures. Those creatures don't attack during their control and substep. Rather costly for that. But it has Cycling 1. Even though I'm not playing blue, that is going in my cycling deck because it costs one to cycle. Pyroceratops, three and a red for two, three trample. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Those of you spell slings out there, great. It's like permanent prowess. Uh, Perimeter Sergeant, two and a white for a three, two. When it attacks, other humans get plus one power. Corpse Churn again. 
Bristling Boar, three and a green, four, three. Can't be blocked by more than one creature. I believe that's a reprint. Okay, a lot of cards in this, this pack that I haven't uh, spoken about yet. Wingfold Terran, five and a blue for a three, six. When it enters the battlefield, uh, you put a counter on it of your choice from Flying and Hexproof. Uh, another Snare Tactician. Survivor's Bond, one and a green sorcery. Choose one or both. Return target human card from graveyard to hand. Return target non-human card from graveyard to hand. Green, yes, but if you're playing Winota and you've decided to splash green, great bit of graveyard retrieval. Two cards for two. Uh, another Farfinder. Another Bloom Pangolin. Gloom Pangolin, I should say. Uncommons. Pouncing Shore Shark. Four and a blue, or mutate for three and a blue for a four three flash. Whenever this creature mutates, you may return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Uh, another flourishing fox, great. That's two of my playset. Aha, another one that's going to go uh, in. Well, certainly a couple of decks I can think of. Red removal, one and red, blitz of the thunder raptor. Instance uh, deals damage equal to uh, sorry deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. If that creature or planeswalker would die, exile instead. This is why it's uncommon. Spell slingers, great removal. Cyclers, great removal. I need a place at these. Okay, uh, the rare in this pack is Quartzwood Crasher. Two and two red and a green for a 6-6 six, six dinosaur beast with trample. Whenever one or more creatures you control with trample deal combat damage to a player, create an XX green dinosaur beast creature token with trample, where X is the amount of damage those creatures dealt to that player. I mentioned earlier trample tribal deck. Solid piece in that. And if you're playing something in say commander that gives all of your creatures trample stick that out too now what's interesting about this is it doesn't do it for each creature it takes the total damage that got through from trample and creates a beast that big if you're going wide with a lot of tramplers you could end up making one very big creature with that i really do like this card shame it's got to be so much red in it but it's going to be an interesting card to try and play uh i then have rugged highlands in my land slot and another companion zone marker in the token next pack glimmer bell frenzied raptor imposing mansoor Mutual Destruction. Almighty Brushwag. Frostvale Ambush. Convolute. Evolving Wilds. Okay, uh, another common we haven't got to. Excavation Mold. Two and green for a 3 3 trample when it enters. Uh, self Mill for three. Next, Coordinated Charge. Four and a white. Instant creatures you control get plus two plus one till end of turn. If you've gone wide, fair enough, it's it's a game ender, but it's quite a lot of mana for that. But it has cycling. Uncommons a trumping gnar one and simic for a three three or mutate for three and hybrid two uh, two hybrid simics. But whenever it mutates, you create a three three beast. Oh, awesome! Another blitz of the thunder raptor. And our last uncommon, Monstrous, Monstrous Step. Four and a green. Target creature gets plus seven, plus seven to end of turn. This is sorcery though. Up to one, up to one other target creature blocks it this, a, this turn if able. And cycling two. In the right circumstances, could be useful. And the rare from this pack is, oh, beautiful. Emergent Ultimatum. 
Uh, this is the Sultai Sorcery. That's the ultimatum. So it's two black, three green, two blue. I can't see this again having any play in standard, but in Commander. Search your library for up to three monocolored cards with different names. Again, Commander, Singleton, not an issue. Uh, exile them. An opponent chooses one of them. Shuffle that back into your library. You may cast the others without paying their mana costs. Basically, go dig in your library for three really big threats. You're getting two of them for free. I mean, I say free, it's it's the seven mana you've paid for the ultimatum, but you're getting two cards for that. Two big cards. I mean, it's just beautiful. I, I, I can see quite a few people in Commander starting to play these ultimatums. That's just beautiful. Uh, basic Island and the second artwork for the Human Soldier. Uh, I believe it's that. I think it's that one. I think it's the middle one. If you're mapping, I think this is the middle one of this layer. I could be wrong. I think it's the one I should be opening. I should say definitely the middle one of this layer. We have Night Squad Commando. Two and a black for a 2-3 uh, when it ends the battlefield. If you attack to this turn, create a 1-1 one, one human soldier. Another greater sandworm. Startling development. Where's my blue? Cathartic reunion. Ah, okay. Uh, spring jaw trap. It's a one-drop artifact with flash. Pay four, tap, sack it to do three damage to any target. It's a really weird bolt. You're paying a lot of mana for, but if you really need removal and you know you need colorless, I can see it working. Uh, another perimeter sergeant, prickly marmoset, uh, two and a red, two three monkey with first strike. Whenever you cycle a card, it gets plus two until end of turn. Again, it's not what I've planned to put in my cycling deck. But it might get put in. We'll see. Uh, another Farfinder. Another Blazing Volley. Okay. Uncommons. Back for more. Four and black green. Instant. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. When you do, it fights one target creature you don't control. Up to one target creature you don't control. Costly removal, but also graveyard retrieval. Uh... Ketria Trion, this is the Tamir one. And our last uncommon. Okay, this is again one of those going in my Rakdos Menace deck. The Frill Scare Mentor, two and a red for a 3-2. Enter the battlefield, put a Menace Counter on target non-human creature you control. Most of them are going to have Menace already. But the second ability on this is what why it's going in the deck. Pay two and a red, tap it, put a plus one counter on each creature you control with Menace. And the rare from this pack, another ultimatum. This time the Genesis ultimatum. Uh, that's the Tamiya one, so it's double green, three blue and double red. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest in your hand. Exile Genesis ultimatum. This is either going to give you a lot of cool things on the battlefield or you're going to get some stuff to your hand. You could easily whiff with this. You could easily get some really big shit onto the battlefield. But apologies, this was not meant to uh, have swearing in it. Um, but yeah, you could really do some damage with this card or get not a lot. Uh, then have basic land behind that we have another foil uh we got a foil ram through and because of that the token is just the placeholder card that doesn't do anything and pack from the right on top of this layer next one i have a shredded sails helica glider 
Unlikely aid. Uh, one in black. Instant target creature gets plus two and indestructible until end of turn. Now, interestingly, not an indestructible counter like a lot of these cards are given. Just the end turn. But still, you've got something you want to save and you're playing black. Uh, Wilt. Destroy target artifact or enchantment for one in a green with cycling two. Keep safe. One in a blue. Counter target spell that could targets a permanent you control and draw a card one on a blue uncommon came to spell it granted it's got to be something specifically targeting permanent you control but that's going to stop any removal as long as it's not board white removal uh potato tiger the regular art dream tail heron i think in this case i actually prefer the rig the regular art to the alternative art Uh, reprint plummet uh, another memory leak and uncommons we have another primal empathy then we have a majestic oracorn four and a white for a four four with mutate of three and a white vigilance when it mutates gain four life can't see that seeing much play um okay i'll pause this again in a second that may be done um charge of the forever beast two and a green as an additional cost to cast a spell reveal a creature card from your hand it deals damage equal to target creature or planes what equal to the revealed card's power so it's one-sided fight but the creature's in your hand not too bad and then the pack rare Okay, we got Mythos of Nethroid, two and a black. Destroy target, non-land permanent, if it's a creature. Or, if green and white were spent to cast this spell. If you're playing Abzan, it's just solid removal. If you're not, it's still creature removal for three. That's the rare from this back. I can see it being used in standard, uh, even if people aren't playing Abzan. We'll see. Um, island. Oh, and then a foil back for more. And a creature token. There we go. And I'm back. And you never knew because of the magic of being able to pause uh, the recording. Uh, so pack, what I believe is number 15. I've just done a count. So this was the rightmost on this layer. I think I did mess up for those of you that are trying to map, but I'm not sure. Um, what do we have? A Forbidden Friendship. A Survive Sabretooth. Durable Coil Bug. One in black for 2-2. Two, two. Uh, has four in black. Return it from graveyard to hand. That seems m overly expensive for a cheap little 2-2. Two, two. Uh, we also have a flycatcher giraffe. It's an antelope lizard. Uh, three five for four and a green. When it enters, it gets your choice of a vigilance or a reach counter on it. Uh, another phase dolphin. Aha. Uh, here we have another one of the cards that is going to be in my Rakdos menace deck. Uh, Tentative Connection, three and a red. Sorcery. This spell costs three less to cast if you control a creature with Menace, which I should do because it's a Menace deck. Uh, gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap it, gains haste. So basically, for one red, I'm going to steal one of your creatures. Uh, also featuring Luca and his big tiger-like creature that I don't know the name of. Again, when I get round to reading Sundred Bond, I'm sure it'll tell me. Uh, another pacifism. Another anticipate. Suffocating fumes for two and a black creatures your opponents control get minus one minus one to end turn. Cycling two. The name sounds familiar. It may be a reprint. I'm not sure. Uh, another excavation mole. And onto the uncommons. Okay, we have a regal leosaur. Uh, for Boros, you get a 2-2 Dinosaur Cat, with whenever it mutates other creatures you control, get plus 2, plus 1 until end of turn. 
it mutates for one plus two lots of hybrid boros. Uh, so this is basically what that white creature, uh, white spell did that I said was massively overpriced. Coordinated charge. Um, the whole two plus one for your creatures. The only difference is it doesn't give it to itself. But just for mutating, you get that effect. Uh, pretty cool card, I think. Whether anybody's playing uh, Boros Mutate remains to be seen. Uh, I then have Zagoth Crystal, which is the Sultai uh, Mana Rock. And the last uncommon is a Wingspan Mentor. Two and a blue for a 1-3 human wizard. When it enters, put a flying counter on target non-human creature you control. And for two and blue, put a plus one counter on each creature you control with flying. So it's part of that cycle, um, just like the Frill Scare Mentor, uh, where it goes, put this kind of counter on a non-human creature, and you can pay mana and tap to give a buff to that kind to all your creatures with that kind of keyword. Uh, so that's a Wingspan Mentor. There's one in each colour um, of that cycle. There's a lot of different cycles in this set. Um, and um, Rare is a Whirlwind of Thought. One and Jeskai for an enchantment of whenever you cast a non creature spell, draw a card. So for the spell slingers out there, yeah. Lots of card draw just for doing what you're already doing. Uh, land slot, we have a mountain. And nothing after it other than the token, which is actually one of the blank tokens. So, interesting there, interesting pack. Okay, uh, starting the next row from the left. Uh, Pyroceratops. Perimeter Sergeant. Corpse Churn, Bristling Boar, Wingfall Pterodon, or Pteron, uh, Shredded Sails. Okay, uh, Combat Tricks, Heightened Reflexes, one red, instant, target creature gets plus one, plus zero and seven turn, put a first strike counter on it. Solid little combat trick. Be useful actually in. Um, a feather deck for those of you that are still out there playing feather. Uh, Blood curdle. Oh, and again, uh, one of my favourite cards. I love the cheap blue blockers that they put in a set that are vanilla and are just great to just drop on your first turn and then you can happily sit behind. Um, Aegis Turtle is that creature for this set. One blue for a zero power, but five toughness turtle just drop that out there love playing these in sealed uh so you can get to the card you want to get to and just bl chump block things it's like oh you, you're getting a bigger creature on turn two and turn three and so it's like don't care i'm gonna hide behind my zero five turtle um which with all the things in this set that you can do to to, to creatures like putting counters on the stuff that zero five turtle might soon become a 1-6 with Death Touch, or with Lifelink, or Menace, or First Strike. You know, it's not so useless in this set. I personally love cards like this, especially for Sealed. They don't, I don't tend to put them in necessarily, you know, more thought out decks. But they have their place in Magic. Uh, next, onto the Uncommons. Flame Spill, 2 and a red for an instant, deals 4 damage to target creature. Again, Excess damage is dealt to its controller, so trampling four damage for three. Uh, next, for one and two lots of high brick Selesnia, that's green and white. Two four, alert heal bonder. It's a human scape with vigilance, and at the beginning of your end step, you gain one life for each creature you control with vigilance. Now, obviously, if you're playing Selesnia, that especially if you're maybe playing Cat Tribal. Um, there's a lot of use for that out there. Probably got uh, Vigilant. 
And the final uncommon is a Stormwild Caprador. It's two and a white for a 1-3 flying bird goat. But if non-con that damage would be dealt to Stormwild Caprador, prevent that damage and put a plus one plus one counter on it for each one damage prevented this way. Now I saw an interesting video online um, of somebody using this in Feather. Um, but rather than pump spells, they were using things like shock and bolts to deal damage to the Caprador itself to pump it up. Then obviously getting the, the removal spell back with Feather. Um, but very quickly making this into a really big creature that obviously is essentially immune to red removal. You need black removal or blue removal or fight no green fighting damage i don't think would count for this because again that's non-combat damage um and again white removal it's it's a tricky little thing to get rid of bit of fun to potentially build around if you if you fancy it interesting card uh, and a rare, ah, okay, it's one of the Mythos cards. It's the one I really don't care, care about at all. It is the Mythos of Vadrock, which is the red one, which is, well, red and I say red, it's Jeskai, uh, because it's five damage, divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers. But if you spend the white and the blue to pay the two generic, um, until your next turn, those particular permanents can't block or attack and their activated abilities can't be activated. So if you're playing Jeskai and you're playing something like Commander, this actually is pretty good because of that last line, the cannot activate abilities. But otherwise, it's not great. It's four for five damage, four mana for five damage which isn't spectacular. If you claim the Jeskai, you pay the white and blue, fair enough. Or you claim five colour. It has its space, but of all the Mythos cards, I think I'm least impressed with that one. Uh, okay, our land slot is a dismal backwater. Behind that is a foil mountain. And our token is one I haven't had yet, which is a 1-1 one, one hasty dinosaur. So, uh, dead weight, <laughs> honey mammoth. Uh, it's basically colossal dreadmore. Only they change the trample to when it enters, you gain four life because it's four and two green for a six six. I think it's just in there for a bit of comedic value. The artwork's pretty funny, but it's not a great creature. Top of your curve in a seal, maybe, but. Other than that, it's not going to see much play. Uh, the next is Sorcery. On what, of one mind, two and a blue. Cost two less to cast, though, if you have a human creature and a non-human creature. And it's draw two cards. I mean, drawing two cards for three is pretty standard for, for blue anyway. Um, but to be able to get it for one single blue, if you have a human and a non-human, not bad. Uh, another Pyroceratops. Another solid footing. Bushmeat Poacher. Three and a black for a two, four human soldier. With one tap, sack another creature. Gain life equal to its toughness and draw a card. If you're into sacking your creatures. The card draw and you want to gain some life. Their card. Uh, another Fertilid. Another Day Squad Marshal with a ridiculously big sword. Another Aegis Turtle. Another Survivor's Bond. And Uncommons now. Okay, so uh, Insatiable Hemophage. Uh, three and a black for a 3-3 three, three Nightmare. Mutate is two and a black. It has Death Touch and whenever it mutates, mutates uh, each, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. 
plane mutate. Stick it in there. Uh, another prode wildlander. And last and common is avian oddity. Yeah, interesting artwork on this one. It's um, it's a bird with stupid amounts of wings. Uh, three and a blue for a two four flying. Cycle it for a two and a blue. And when you cycle it, you put a flying counter on a creature. The rare in this pack is the bread and butter of the Rakdos deck I'm building. For Rakdos, 2-2 two, two, Menace. Whenever a creature block, sorry, whenever a creature you control with Menace, whenever a creature I control with Menace, and bear in mind they're all going to have Menace, becomes blocked, the defending player sacrifices a creature blocking it. So this makes my creatures incredibly hard to stop unless you've got a you know lots of just hard removal spells you're gonna have to throw two creatures or three if i've got uh the other creature out that means they have to be blocked by three but you're gonna have to block with several creatures to block my menace creatures and then you're gonna have to be sacking a creature as well which makes it more likely that my creature stays alive and at the very least i'm clearing off your board also, for Rakdos, creatures you control with Menace get plus one, plus zero to the end of turn. It is a nightmare dinosaur. I am really looking forward to the deck that I'm building. Uh, as I say, this is a key piece to it. It's not legendary, which means if I've got two of them out, you block at something with Menace, you're sacking two creatures. It's just absolutely disgusting and filthy, and I love it, and I'm really looking forward to having a chance to play it um oh behind that is some land support for it i got a blood caves and then another companion uh placeholder next pack blade banish uh three and one exile target creature with powerful aggression i believe this is either a reprint or it's certainly a functional reprint um, and it has the Wanderer in its artwork. Uh, Lurking Deadeye again. Thwart the Enemy. Facet Reader. Go for Blood. One in a red sorcery target creature you control. Uh, fights target creature you don't control. And Cycling One. Featuring Luca and his uh, Dragon Tiger in the artwork. Uh... Divine Arrow certainly is a reprint. Light of Hope, one white, instant. Choices, people, choices. Either gain four life, destroy target enchantment, or put a plus one counter on target creature. Now, I know competitive play doesn't see cards like this being played, but tabletop magic, which is more what I'm about, solid little card, lots of choices from it. Great. Cleo Piercer, aha. Uh -huh. Uh, another mutate card, this one uh, common, uh, that again is if you're playing mutate, you want to be playing this because it's just ramp. Uh, three and green for three, four, or mutate for only two and a green. And when it mutates, search your library for a basic land, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and shuffle your library. It is a migratory great horn. Uh, another adaptive shimmer. And now for the uncommons. Sanctuary Smasher. 4 and 2 red, 6 4, first strike with cycling. If you choose to cycle it, put a first strike counter on it. I can't remember if I have one of these and showed it on already or not. Now, this one I just love the artwork for. Uh, it's Necropanther. 1 and um, white and a black. Uh, 1 and Orzov. It's 3 3 or mutate for 2 and 2 lots of Orzov, but hybrid. Whenever this creature mutates, return target creature card with converted mana cost three or less from graveyard to battlefield. But I mean, just look at the artwork on that. How cool is that? Those glowing eyes and just the skin on it. It's just lovely. Uh, final uncommon is another Root and Moloch. And the rare in this pack is, okay, some solid black Board wiping, extinction event. 
choose odd or even, exile each creature with converting mana cost of the chosen value. Zero is even. Now, some of you out there are probably going, oh, but it's not necessarily solid board wipe because, you know, I'm going to have a mixture of CMCs in my deck. Sure, you probably are. It's still going to do a fair bit of damage. And if you're playing one of the companions out there that requires you to have all evens or the other companion that it requires you to have all odds, that's going to screw you over. And it's a four drop with what is potentially a full board wipe of your opponents. Although I'm just realizing it's not a one sided. It is each creature with converted mana cost shares of value, which again, though, if you want to build around a companion, you choose to go the odd or the even one, always pick the opposite. Your stuff's not going to be affected. I do think it's a solid rare and it's a solid board wipe. Somewhat situational, yes, but still good. Swiftwater Cliffs and some counters. Oh, next back. What do we have? So we have another Helical Glider, Unlikely Aid, Wilt, Keep Safe, Forbidden Friendship. Uh, talks about one of the ones that goes across the story, uh, tells a story across three cards. This is one of those other cards featuring the particular bonder and his bonded creature. Uh, this one gives you the red dinosaur, which is what I got the token for, um, with haste, and also a human. So for one and a red, you're getting two one ones, one with haste. If you like tokens and going wide or making tokens to sack out, good little choice. Survivor Sabretooth, Prickly Marmoset, Patagia Tiger. Plummet, Suffocating Fumes, aha, Uncommon, okay, so this is again one of the uh, key pieces to the cycling deck that I'm building, it is the Valiant Rescuer, it is one and a white for a 3-1 human soldier, with whenever you cycle, create a 1-1 human soldier token, sit there and cycle a bunch, go wide, and he himself, 3-1, going to force people to block, Going to force them to lose stuff. Good little choice. Uh, next one comes Reptilian Reflection. Two and a red for an enchantment. Whenever you cycle a card, you may have it become a 5 4 dinosaur with trample and haste in addition to its other types until end of turn. Again, I haven't planned to put this in the cycling deck, but it might find a place in there because it does give it trample and haste. So drop it turn three if I've got a bit of extra mana. Cycle, have it go attacking. Uh, the last uncommon, Void Beckoner, 6 and 2 black, Death Touch 8 8 with cycling, and when you cycle it, give a Death Touch counter. And our rare is. Well, I'm very happy. I have yet again another mythic rare, yet again another alternative. Full art one of Narset, not foil this time, but still two full art, alternative art, Planeswalkers in this box. Very happy with that. Uh, Bloodfell Caves, blank token. Okay, next pack, two Narsets. We have a Wilt, Frostfire Ambush, Go for Blood, Main Serval, Mutual Destruction. Oh, a common we haven't covered. Uh, Moscoat Goriak, 2 and a green, 2 4 Vigilant Beast. Nothing special. Uh, Rumbling Rock Slide, 3 and a red, Sorcery, deals damage to target creature equal to the number of lands you control. If you're playing ramp, that's solid removal. If you're in a long game, especially a commander, 
where you may be playing again a lot of ramp um i have a lands matter deck that's elementals uh that's a good solid removal card it's shame it's sorcery rather than instant but even still you could do a lot of damage with that shame again it's only target creature rather than any target but again this is why it's a common not uncommon or rare anticipate snare tactician migratory great horn okay on to the uncommons again one i like the the artwork of because again it's a a derpy um dinosaur being mesmerized mystic sub jewel two to flash in enchanted creature gets minus two and loses all abilities again really good for commander players out there that want to just slow down their annoying opponent's commander stop its activate abilities without necessarily getting rid of it which means your opponent's got to find their own way of getting rid of the enchantment or getting rid of the creature to and bring it back later fun card uh zagoth mamba and the final uncommon uh barrier breach two and a green exile up to three target enchantments with cycling two really good solid enchantment removal you're getting three of them now this is clearly in here because obviously the set before this was um theros beyond death which reintroduced uh a lot of enchantments and enchantment creatures so if people are playing those that's a good card for removal and okay i've had a really good box apparently because i've got another mythic rare in my hand and it's one of the more valuable ones it is well it's not the actual godzilla version of it but it's basically essentially still mothra I got the Luminous Broodmoth. This is an absolutely bonkers card. Uh, three and two white, three, four flying. Whenever a creature you control without flying dies, return it to the battlefield under its own control with a flying counter on it. There are a whole bunch of things out there that can allow you to remove that flying counter or you can play a solemnity and prevent that flying counter going on in the first place which would essentially mean that all of your creatures just hit the graveyard bounce straight back it's crazy it's it's just essentially i'm going to have all my creatures continually come back to life if your opponents are somebody that like to play archetype of imagination which removes flying from your creatures and prevents them from gaining flying slap one of these down and all of your creatures essentially just bounce off the graveyard even this if they're playing archetype of imagination because it removes the flying from this and it will see itself die and come back really happy to have pulled one of these really really happy uh thornwood falls and some counters okay we are down to nope we've still got quite a few packs left still digging down of course i was getting down towards the bottom I'm still quite a way off okay durable coil bug fly catcher giraffe phase dolphin another tentative connection need a place out of those blade banish lurking dead eye dream tile heron light of hope Heightened reflexes. Oh, okay. We've got another alternative art card. It's the migratory great horn again. This time with the alternative art. Let's just see. Oh, there we go. It's only a couple away because it was in the last pack. Very similar image, just done in a different style. Um, not sure which of these I like better. Still quite cool to have grabbed one of these out of a regular pack. I refuse to pay £20 for a booster for the collector's edition ones. I get that they've got some really cool stuff in them. And if you're really lucky, great. You might make your money back if you sell the stuff in it. Otherwise, they are very much just a cash grab for collectors. I'll, I'll take normal boosters, thanks. And especially if I'm getting alternative arts in them. 
Okay, uh, Uncommons, Jubilant Skywander. Um, one and two lots of hybrid white blue. You Azorius players out there, for a 2 2 flyer, with creatures you're, you control with flying, have, quote, spells your opponent's cast that target this creature cost two more to cast, end quote. If you're going Azorius flyers, because you just wanted to go for something simple, or you've done that in sealed, which is always a solid, solid choice for playing a sealed event, for only a three drop, really cool card going to make it costly for your opponents to remove stuff. Oh, another alternative art card in here. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to dig and find the original. It is an archipelago. The big Leviathan 7-7 seven, seven mutator. I like both the artworks for this. That one's really cool though. Uh, next uncommon is Boon of the Wishgiver. Four and two blue, draw four cards, sorcery. Not bad, solid. Cycling one. This again is going to go in my cycling deck, even though I won't have the blue mana to play it, because cycling one. Really cool card. If you're playing cycling. And the rare is one of those cards breaking standard right now. It's not Lurus. It is the alternate other card breaking standard right now. It is a Yorian. Sky Nomad, three and two hybrid uh, Azorius, four, five companion. Now this one's quite interesting. You can't have it as your companion in uh, Commander because it's specifically 100 cards for that. And the companion for this is your starting deck contains at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size. But for Standard and for Modern and Pioneer or Brawl or Legacy, Vintage, easy to put an extra 20 cards in. Messes with the metrics of, you, of your deck there, but the fact is he's flying and when he enters the battlefield, exile any number of other non-land permits you, your own and control. Return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. Blink your stuff. Get all your enter the battlefield triggers again. Just for playing that. And otherwise he's a 4-5 flyer for 5. It's not bad. I didn't think when he was revealed that he was necessarily going to be that good. But having seen what people have started doing with him. I can see why he's a little broken. And why he's breaking the format happy with that and then we have a swamp and a human soldier next card next pack a mayo again of missed up the mapping and dug in on the left hand side a bit few too many times one too many times so if you're trying to map from this give up now not to say it can even be mapped i just know a previous set that, that you were able to map where things were and I think I've been very, very lucky with this box and got quite a few uh, more mythics than you normally would and solid rares to be fair. So we have another bushmeat poacher. Honey Mammoth. The final card that tells that story between a bonder and his bonded uh, creature. Uh, Capture Sphere, three and a blue. Flash, enchant creature, tap it, it doesn't untap. I'm always a fan of that kind of uh, enchantment. The fact that this has flash in it as well, for that extra mana that you're paying, because you're paying four rather than three for that sort of thing. Pretty cool. Uh, another common we haven't spoken about, Racking Claws, one on a red, target creature gains double strike until end of turn. Not put a counter on it, which is a shame, but cycling for two. Uh, another garrison cat, unexpected fangs, fully grown, blood curdle, convolute, and the uncommons. Okay, chittering harvester, five and a black for a four six nightmare, mutates for four and a black, and whenever it mutates, each opponent sacks a creature. I'm always a fan of your opponent sacking a creature. 
because it gets round indestructible or hexproof. So long as they don't have too many creatures and they can just sack something you, you don't care about. Being able to stick it on a mutate creature, pretty cool. Uh, other comp, Migration Bath. Search for two basics, stick them on the battlefield tapped, shuffle, also has cycling, four. Good run. Final uncommon uh, in Datha Crystal again, that's the uh, Abzan. Mana Rock. And our rare is Gem Razor. This is one of those mutate creatures uh, that's been very popular. It seems to have held quite a bit of value for a rare. Three and a green for a 4 4, or mutate for one and two green. It's a 4 4 reach and trample. When it mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Great way of having removal in the deck without just a card, a single card for an artifact and enchantment removal. It's also got reach and trample. It's solid 4 4 body for four. Really good if you're playing mutate rather than having to play other spells to remove your opponent's um, artifacts and enchantments. And we all know what particular enchantments people might be targeting <coughs> as far as an invention. Um, swamp, oh, oh, okay. Uh, foil behind the land, double rare pack. Foil Genesis Ultimatum. I am having really good luck with this uh, deck box. I'm glad I've decided to record this because those people that know me and know what I have uh, terrible luck when it comes to cracking a box. Um, I once had a box with absolutely no mythic rares in it. I had one with two in it and those were two terrible mythic rares. Um, yeah, I've just not had great luck and with just single boosters or something, I never had great luck. So the things I've got out of this box so far, I don't know if Wizards have changed how many rares are in certain boxes, and that might be why, you know, the, there was a delay with the printing of paper because they wanted to reward people for buying paper in these hard and unusual times. Um, but I'm really quite happy so far, and we still have some packs to go. Uh, so let's uh, carry on with those. This smile. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Couch Sphere. At the rares, that is. Uh, Ferocious Tigerilla. Imposing Vansaw. Unlikely Aid. Flying Giraffid. Sorry, Fly Catcher Giraffid. Windfall Terron. Hampering Snare. One and blue. Creatures your opponents control get minus two, minus out on turn for instant cycling two. There. Suffocating Fumes, Pacifism, Blister Spit Gremlin, and then we've hit upon another alternative art. So the first uncommon in here we have is a Lord Dracus. Uh, one and blue red. Um, two, three, Lizard Beast with Mutate, hybrid, two blue red. Whenever this creature mutates, return target instant sorcery card. From the graveyard to your hand. Okay. I can't see many is it players playing mutate, but if you do want creatures in your spell slinger deck, maybe go with a mutate th sub theme. Play this, get your spells back. Next rare, uh, uncommon, sorry, is th two and a white for a 3 3 life linking elk unicorn. Cycling one and two. Uh, so why one and white? I am getting very tongue tied right now. Uh, whenever you cycle it, put a life link came to that on target creature. That's the white one of that particular cycle. I'm just going to point out if it has antlers and then a horn, it's not a unicorn because uni means one. It's just a fancy elk that has antlers and a horn. You can try and say it's an elk unicorn all you want. It's not a unicorn if it has more than one horn. Uh, and then our other uncommon is Swallow Hole. One white. As an additional cost spell, cast this spell, 
tap an untapped creature you control, because this is white, not black, you don't have to sacrifice, no blood sacrifices here. Exile target tapped creature. Okay, so exile, yay, has to be tapped, boo. Put a plus one plus one counter on the creature that you tap to pay the additional cost. That's pretty cool for one white. Sorcery, there's a lot of ups and downs on this card. It's like, it's one white, it's a sorcery. It's exile, but it's only a tapped creature. It's put a plus one plus one counter on the creature you tapped to pay the cost. You have to pay it to have creatures to pay the cost. It's very balanced. Pretty cool card though. And our rare for the deck is for the pack is Cub Warden. Three and a white. Three five cats. Lifelink. When it mutates, create a one one lifelinking cat. It mutates for two and two whites. This is one of those rares that I really don't care about and no neither does anybody else. It's very cheap right now to go and buy these because it's just not great. I mean if you're playing Cat Tribal, sure. But then you're probably not going to be doing a whole lot of mutating. If you're playing life gain deck, sure, again, but again, you've got to mix it with the mutate theme. Hmm. Interesting card, not anything special. Forest, human soldier token. Oh, my, my nose is so itchy today. I don't know why. I'm not snotty or anything like that, it's just itching. So I do apologise that I keep doing this. I don't have the Corona. Um, and I shouldn't joke about that, but yeah. I'm going crazy here in uh, isolation, apparently. Um, next pack. Uh, another most Moss Coat Gorak. Goriak. I'm getting very tongue-tied. Keep safe. Spelly to Wolverine. Which again, I, I say very, the, the bear wolf looks very much like a wolverine. Play Banish, Durable Coilbug, Bristling Boar, Prickly Marmoset. Oh, awesome. Another alternative art, Wolfkeet. Uh, oh, okay, common haven't we talked about. Sleep at Art. Two drop enchantment, uh, artifact even. I am really starting to lose it now. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Uh, one tap, sack it. Dish target creature doesn't untap during its controls. Next step, step. I may actually have spoken about that. Mysterious egg. On to the uncommons, another parcel beast. Okay, another two pack. A uh, pack with two alternative art cards. And I've got a Huntmaster Liger. Now this, I really like the alternative art on. How cool is that? Uh, three and a white for a three, four. With mutate for one white and two generic. When it mutates, other creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of times this creature is mutated. I mean, you're already getting to play it for cheaper for mutating it. To get a three, four, you'd probably put this on top. And your other creature is going to get at least plus one, plus one. Other creatures, plural. Pretty cool. I like it. If you're playing white and playing mutate, that with you know the cub warden. Uh, next uncommon, uh, final uncommon, call of death dweller, and the rare awesome uh, is the slither wisp. Uh, I talked about the fact that I was going to make a demir flash deck. Straight away, that's going in it. Dismal Backwater and a Human Soldier. Okay. I think I'm on the penultimate row, which means this is one of six left open. What do we have? Thwart the Enemy, Facet Reader, Go for Blood, Divine Arrow, Bushmeat Poacher, Gloom Pangolin, Mysterious Egg. Rumbling Rock Slide, Sleeper Dart, Sonorous Hellbonder, Weaponize the Monsters, uh, one red for an enchantment, which has pay two, sack a creature, it deals two damage to any target. 
Well, that's underwhelming. Two damage for two and a sacrifice. I mean, it's one to drop it in the first place, but it's red. If you're playing tokens, you're probably not playing red. I can see its place. Uh, for instance, I do have a standard deck that utilizes things uh, that deal damage when they die. And comboed with Torbran means they're doing lots of damage. And actually, that would have a place in that deck. It's a one drop, which means you probably want to put it early, but at the same time, it's then two for each time you want to sacrifice. So it's more towards the later game when you've got a lot more spare mana. If I was still playing that deck, I might try and put that in it because uh, it uses things like the Footlight Fiend. When it dies, it deals damage. That gives you a sack outlet for it, and it's a red source. So with Torbrand, you could be doing quite a bit of damage. You know, drop a Footlight Fiend. Pay two sack it, that's three mana. You're going to be hitting for seven for that three mana, which is pretty good. Four mana if you include dropping that the same turn as well. But it's very, very situational, very particular decks, I think. Uh, I do believe the artwork is featuring Luca. I think that's him. Again, I really must read. Sundered Bond. Uh, next uncommon, Dusk Fang Mentor. This is the last uncommon. Uh, two and a black, one and a three. When it enters, put a life encounter on target non human creature you control. Pay to tap, put a plus one counter on each creature with lifelink. It's that particular cycle. Uh, oh, it works pretty nice. And the rare for the pack. Death's Oasis. Uh, this is the Absent Enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put the top two cards of your library into a graveyard, then return a creature card with lesser CMC than the creature that died from graveyard to hand. Pay one sack Death's Oasis, gain life equal to the greatest CMC among creatures you control. Interesting Salt of Enchantment. I don't think this has held much value. I think it's uh, one of those that's dropped in price because it's very particular and people just don't care. Swiftwater Cliffs. Oh, uh, we have a foil Dark Bargain. And some more counters. Forbidden Friendship. It's a storytelling one. Uh, spontaneous Flight. Night Squad Commando. Almighty Brushwag, Theming Otter, Cavern Whisperer, Excavation Mole, Adaptive Shimmerer, Heightened Reflexes, and we're now onto the Uncommons, and again I've hit an Uncommon I haven't had so far, and it's one of the more valuable Uncommons, Sprite Dragon. Um, what can I say? It's it is it for a 1-1 flyer that also has haste and also has permanent prowess. Whenever you cast an old creature spell, put a plus one counter on it. If you're playing is it spell slinger, this is the creature you're going to be using. You know, turn two, you drop in that, you hit him for one, and after that, every turn you're making it bigger. It's just value. Uh, next one coming, Reconnaissance Mission. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. For two and two blue, cycling two. Solid card draw card. If you're playing, say, a commander deck uh, where you've got access to blue, but you don't want to play Spell Slinger, you're going to probably play that. You're going to be looking to hit people in the face and getting card draw off of that is great. And final uncommon, Rawgrin Crystal, that's the Jeskai um, Mana Rock. And our rare is Voracious Great Shark. Uh, so again, the 
Demir flash deck that I'm planning on building. Needs a single copy of that. There we go. It's three and two blue for a five four flash when it enters came to target artifact or creature spell. Uh, Tranquil Cove, a foil swallow hole, and then a token that's actually going to be really useful since I got two copies. I got Nasa Emblem. Okay, Gust of Wind, Breaking Claws, Dranith Healer, Whisper Squad, Humble Naturalist, Elf One Mind, Fire Prophecy, Gloom Pangolin, Fertilid, Passiga Tiger, Uncommon, Jubilant Skybonder. Ivy Elemental. Ooh, green and X for a zero zero enters with X plus one counters on it. Fair. Um, then another escape protocol. And what's our rare? Something else for the flash deck. Sea Dash Octopus. Despite the fact that Mutate itself is not necessarily being played as such. This is one of those rares that has really been holding value because it's one and two blue for a two two with mutate one and blue flash. Whenever this creature does combat damage to a player, draw a card. I see the value in this. It's a case of put something down turn one, turn two, attack. Oh, opponent doesn't block because they don't want to trade because maybe it's one one versus one 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 or they've not got a blocker. Flash that on, suddenly you hit him for two and drawing card. Turn two. Brilliant card. Planes. Dinosaur token. Okay, we're on. No, we're not on the bottom row. There's still more to go. I thought that it was the penultimate row. The last lot. It's not. This appears to be the penultimate row. So many cards. Okay, what we got? Honey Mammoth. Capture Sphere. Raking Claws. Garrison Cat. Unexpected Fangs. Moscow Goriak, Memory Lake, another Essence Symbiote. I may well end up building a Mutate deck. Purely because I might just do it to Selenia just so I can use those sweet Vulp Uh Light of Hope, Dark Bargain, the regular artwork, Huntmaster Liger. While the artwork's still pretty cool on that, that's so much cooler. My opinion. Ah, Uncommons, Survive Thundermain. Okay, it's Survive and yet it's only Boros. Red and white for a 3-2 Elemental Cat. Whenever you cycle a card, you may pay two. When you do, it deals two damage to target creature and you gain two life. Also gaining the life as well as the doing the shock makes it a bit better. But it's pain two when you cycle. Yeah, it's not planned to go in my cycling card, but may well do. Okay, uh, so last uncommon uh, is again a Charge of the Forever Beast. It's the one sided fight from your hand. Rare. Another Mythos. We got the green one this time, uh, which is actually the Sultai one. Uh, so it's two generic and two green. If you spent the blue and the black, um, search your library for a card, put that card into your graveyard, then shuffle your library, and then return up to two permanent cards from your graveyard to hand. So either way, you're getting two permanents from your graveyard to your hand. If you put uh, salt eye into it, it tutors, which is really cool. Mythos of Brokos. Uh, then I have a forest and a human soldier. Next pack. What do we have then? So, tentative connection. I believe that's three of my place that I need. Another Dranith Healer. I've noticed I've not actually got the commons uh, that I need for the Jeskai uh, 
not Jesco, for the cycling um, deck I want to build, which is ironic since a lot of them are common, but never mind. Uh, unexpected fangs. I've got another box to open, so I'll probably maybe get them in that. Uh, could be also because some of them are uncommons. Adventurous Impulse again, Phase Dolphin, Essence Scatter, scatter Coordinated Charge, Evolving Wilds, Fire Prophecy. Ooh, okay, so uncommon that we haven't come across. Hornbash Mentor, two and a green for 3 3. Add the cycle of when it enters, put a counter on something, in this case, Trample, and pay three tap, put a plus one counter on each creature with it. Uh, next one is Skull Prophet, black, green, 3 1, Mana Dork, because he taps for green or black, or he also taps to put to self mill for two. And last and common is another Reptilian Reflection. The rare in this pack is Yadaro Wandering Monster. Uh, this is one I mentioned earlier when I was talking about how uh, Wizards did the survey. Uh, it's 5 and 2 red for an 8 8 with trample and haste. It also has cycling 1 and red. And when you cycle it, you then shuffle it back into your library from your graveyard. If you've cycled it, uh, a card named Yadaro Wondering Monster four or more times this game, you put it onto the battlefield in, uh, from your graveyard instead. One of the few legendary creatures worth running a playset of in your deck because the point is you want to get these out you want to cycle it and you can very quickly certainly quicker than turn seven uh, assuming you're only doing one land drop a turn which a lot of people are not doing in standard right now um you can very quickly get out this lovely 8-8 eight, eight, trampling hasty dinosaur turtle really cool wouldn't mind trying this in a deck at some point um it's very much not a commander card, obviously, because uh, you do want to play set, but still pretty cool. Then we have a mountain, a foil helica glider, and our token is a cute little catbird. Look at that face, it's so cute. Okay. Next pack. I'm fully aware that this video is now up to two and a half hours. Ferocious Tigerilla. Spontaneous Flight. Chalk Corpse Churn. Ram Through. Frost Lynx. Wolverine. Crystal Crab. Cloud Piercer. Essence Symbiote. Anticipate. Uncommons, Auspicious Starix. Now this is actually, again, one of those mutate cards that's fairly sought after. Um, it's four and a green for a six, six. So five for a six, six is fair. Mutate is actually more, it's uh, five and a green, but it's because when it mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards, but X is the number of times this creature is mutated. Put those permanent cards onto the battlefield. It's again, a way of cheating expensive stuff onto the battlefield if you're very sneaky and tutor something to the top of your deck or you just scribe through it or you're playing with the top of it revealed great time to mutate something put it out onto the battlefield for free channel force again for the is it players last uncommon is going to be another void beckoner and our rare is another companion uh, this time we have the Rakdos Companion, Obosh the Prey Piercer. For three and two hybrid uh, black red, it's a 3 5 Helion Horror. The Companion uh, clause is your starting deck contains only cards with odd converted mana costs and land cards, because land is zero. If a source you control with an odd converted mana cost would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. This is basically uh, another version of um, Torbran. You're gonna see burn decks playing this. 
it just so happens that a lot of the burn stuff and a lot of the red creatures um, in aggro decks are odd converted mana costs. It's almost like they planned it that way uh, when they made this companion. So yeah, a lot of burn decks are now running this as the companion, some with extra cards in the main deck. Um, because who doesn't want to double their burns later in the game when you're running out of gas anyway? I mean, if you get Tor run out as well, and this, stack the triggers, add two on, then double, just so much value. It means a shock for one red mana. Suddenly, rather than hitting for two, hits for eight. If you have both of those pieces out, it's bonkers. I might try and re-jiggle my burn deck and stick this in it. We'll see. I mean, even things uh, such as, oh, what's it called now? It's the red card draw one, so you can have damage dealt to you or let the opponent draw cards. If you really want the cards, um, play this because they're not going to take eight damage or let you have, rather than letting you have three cards. And with those three cards, you might be able to do more damage anyway. Alternatively, they might choose to take eight damage, but that's just, again, insane. So, yeah, happy with that. Obosh, the Prey Piercer. I saw a squirrel. It's a It's my wife's phone. Uh, Tranquil Cove. Oh, and then again, another token I've not seen. It's the 1 1 Life Linking Kitty. Okay, we are finally down. No, no, we're not going to the final layer. I honestly thought I was down on the final layer. I'm not. There's still another layer before that. I can't believe how many packs I'm opening. It feels like they've crammed more than 36 and I swear they have. Um, still going, guys. We'll keep going, keep going. Keep safe. Spell to Wolverine. Blade Banish. Durable Coilwork. Bristling Ball. Gust of Wind. Kudos to you if you're still with me after these two and a half hours. Day Squad Marshal. Hampering Snare. Survivor's Bond. Regular Artwork Bulb Keat. Titanith Rex is an uncommon that I haven't talked about. It's a 9 drop 11 11 trample, but it has cycling, and when you cycle it, you put a trample counter on something. Will of the All Hunter, uh, one and white instant target creature gets plus two plus two to end of turn. If it's blocking, you instead put two plus one counters on it. That I have a deck that will probably go into. Feature snapbacks on it. Brilliant card. Final uncommon of this pack. Again, one I haven't talked about. It's really cool. Ominous Seas. If I was playing blue in my cycling deck, which is not currently the plan, other than you know the ones that cycle, but I'm not going to actually pay for. This would be in it. Uh, one and a blue. Whenever you draw a card, to put a four shadow counter on it. Even just drawing for the turn, that counts. Remove eight to create an eight-eight Kraken. It has cycling too. It's so easy to get eight counters on this, especially in blue. It's just so easy to draw enough cards to just stick that on. It's whenever you draw a card. It, if you're playing a card that allows you to draw two cards, it's two counters on this. It's bonkers. If people don't remove this when it's out or when it gets up to seven, they're stupid. Rare for the pack. Another Mythos of Nethroids, that solid removal card in Sultai. Winds card crag. And <laughs> a flying shark for our Sharknado. Cathartic Reunion, Divine Arrow, Lurking Dead Eye, Humble Naturalist, Startling Development, Frenzied Raptor, Plummet, Alternative Art, Cloud Piercer, Sleeper Dart, Regular Vulpkeet, Uncommons, another Heartless Act. Fighters 1, 
I haven't talked about this. One white. Choose one or both. Target human gets plus one and plus one and instructable to end turn. Target non-human gets plus one plus one and instructable to end of turn. Really solid. And final uncommon. Neutralize. Who loves counter spells? Not me, but you know, never mind. And the rare. Ooh, okay. Uh, interesting card. Um, just got banned in Brawl. Understandable why. Dranith Magistrate. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. Which basically means you can't cast your commander. That's why it's banned in Brawl. Wouldn't be surprised if it gets banned in Commander. But at the same time, don't think it will. Because there's plenty of ways in Commanders to deal with stuff like that. And, you know, the people that actually sort the rules and ban list for Commander are separate to Wizards. And, you know, go, oh, don't be a pussy and, you know, just deal with it. That's going in the Commander deck. Scare Barons. Counters. Helica Glider, Serrated Scorpion, Greater Sandworm, Glimmerbell, Lava Serpent, Main Servant, Serval, Dark Bargain, Pacifism, Gremlin, Cavern Whisperer, Uncommons, Valiant Rescuer, great, Weaponize the Monsters again, Avian Odyssey again, and there it is, there's our Sharknado. And for copyright reasons, it's called Shark Typhoon. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX Blue Shark Creature token with flying, where X is that spell, CMC. Has cycling. Didn't I already get one of these? I may have already got one of these. Think I did. Cool. Sharknado. Island. Counters. I am definitely, positively, 100% on the final row now. Three packs left. Stick with me. Raking Claws. Another Dranith Healer. Whisper Squad. Humble Naturalist. Of One Mind. Aegis Turtle. Spring Draw Trap. Boot Nipper. Coordinated Charge. Uncommon. Okay, I have an alternative art. Boneyard Lurker. Really cool artwork on that. Another Chittering Harvester. And Easy Prey. Instant. Destroy target creature with CMC 2 or less for 2. Has cycling. Ah, uh, rare. Yes, happy about this. Dirge Bat. Uh, 2 and 2 black for a 3 3. Flying. Flash. When it mutates, destroy target creature and uh, all planeswalker on opponent controls, which is why it's mutate, is four and two black. But still, really cool. Mountain. Double rare pack. Got a foil mythos of, of Vadrock. Again, not the mythos that I care about, but foil and double rare pack. Really happy with this booster box. Getting some really awesome pulls out of it. What am I going to get in the last two packs? Well, let's see. One. Solid Footing. Serrated Scorpion. Sudden Spinnerets. Frost Links. Dran Stinger. Need those. Checkpoint Officer. Dark Bargain. Rumbling Rock Slide. Hampering Snare. <sighs> Uncommons. The key part of the cycling deck which i haven't talked about yet because this is the first one i've come across so the whole point of the deck is to cycle 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 why the big payoff for four mana two and a red and a white at instant speed zenith flare deals x damage to any target so creature removal or just face and gain x life where x is the number of cards with cycling in your graveyard a lot of the graveyard hate at the minute in standard is uh, not ley line. A lot of people are playing Graft Digger's Cage, which doesn't stop Zenith Flare because it doesn't remove graveyard, it just stops you playing stuff from the graveyard. Zenith Flare on turn four when you've got the mana to play it. You could have cycled quite a few cards. It's great removal then. By the time you get to turn 
6 or 7, you can do ridiculous amounts of damage with this. Need a playset. First one I've got. Doesn't matter. Happy to get any. Next uncommon. Porky Parrot. 3 in a red for a 3-4. Bird Beast. Mutates for 2 in a red. Has tap. Deals X damage to any target where X is the number of times it's mutated. Final and common, lead the stampede, two and a green. Sorcery, look at the top five of your library, reveal any number of creatures, put them on to your, into your hand, rest of the on the bottom of your library. Solid dig card for green. And, okay, the rare, we have the Raw Trium. It's the Jeskai Triple Land. Considering I started with the Trium and this is the second, only the second one I've got. Yeah. Don't know what to say about that, but yeah, Jeskai land, a plains, a foil tranquil cove, and a creature, which is a human soldier. Last back. What have we got? Wisp of Ward, Sudden Spinnerets, Thieving Otter. Drannis Stinger, Checkpoint Officer, Blitz Leech, Farfinder, Convolute, Evolving Wilds, Alternative Art, Necropanther. Cool artwork, I think the original's better. Another Grim Dancer, another Stormwild Caprador, and a rare is a crystalline giant beginning of combat on your turn choose a kind of counter at random that it doesn't already have from flying first strike death touch hex proof lifelink menace reach trample vigilance and plus one plus one and put that onto it again it's all of the kinds of counter that actually come in the main set which is the ones that are on the punch out um token card not double strike which is reserved spe uh, for specific cards in the uh, commander decks but there are specific cards in the commander decks that can give double strike counter um, still really cool fits into any deck if it's left alone can become a problem blood fell caves foil heart and reflexes human soldier and a partridge in a pear tree thank you guys for if you've stuck with me to the end of this video um i think what i'll do now quickly is just recap all of the rare pulls that i've got from that so for those of you this is kind of like a too long didn't read but too long didn't watch only it's you know at the end of the video not at the start oh well big whoop so my box topper was space quartz uh, godzilla which is actually just Brokos Apex of Power. Really cool. Uh, I've got a place for that in a deck. Um, we're going to go in reverse order because that's the way they're stacked. So, Crystalline Giant. Rorgan Triome. Foil Mythos of Vadrock. Dirgebat. Sharknado. Dranith Magistrate. Mythos of Nethroi. Obosh. Yadaro. Mythos of Brokos, Sea Dasher Octopus, Voracious Great Shark, Death's Oasis, Slither Wisp, Cub Warden, Foil Genesis Ultimatum, Gem Razor, Standard Breaker, Brood Moth, Full Alternate Art Narset, Extinction Event, Labyrinth of Raptor, Regular Mythos of Vadrock, Whirlwind of Thought, another Mythos and Nestroy, another Mythos, uh, another Genesis Ultimatum, regular, Emergent Ultimatum, Quartzwood Crusher, Ruinous Ultimatum, Karuga, Unpredictable Cyclone, Riel, Alt Full Art Luca, Song of Creation, another shark, uh, Sharknado, Colossification, Full Art, Foil Narset, Alternate Art. 
Mythosov, Snapdax, and a Zagoth Trione. Really, really super happy with these pulls. Got uh, extra rares, and I'm fairly sure. One, two, three. Four, five. Yeah, five mythics in that box. Five. One of which is an all times art foil. So, super, super happy with this box. Some of it's going to trade for there. Some of it, most of it, will actually probably get played in various decks. I've been looking forward to this so much. Um, with us being on lockdown right now uh it's, it's the main reason i've made this video but if you have sat through all two and three quarters hour, uh, of an hour of watching it thank you very much i'm not going to tell you to like and subscribe because i don't post videos that often i don't care i'm not looking to make money off of uh, um youtube but thank you for watching and uh, that's it from me i i maybe make a second video for the other box that I have here but if I do it will be a lot quicker because I will basically go this is the rare have I got anything else special no cool moving on yeah uh thank you goodbye